Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here, Mishmash Monday. It's my second attempt at filming this video. I'll tell you, it's very easy to run off. You can talk about this stuff for hours on end. Uh, we got a little instructional video today. We're going to be talking about RPMs. A couple people are asking about that, about RPMs. But really what we're talking about is SFM, surface feet per minute. That's what we have to learn today. So, uh, Buckle up, sit down, relax, and try and open up your mind and absorb some of this uh, complex but very interesting subject of RPM. We'll also do some RPM indicators. Let's get right now, to it. Now, a lot of you probably wonder, why is RPMs even uh, remotely important to us? Because uh, what we do, especially with dealing any kind of attachments on a motor, we want to know how fast that is revolving because we have to calculate the surface speed so that we're not burning something or we're we're not putting too much RPMs, destroying something. So this is easy because a lot of these motors come in two speeds, either like 3600 or 1700. They're either slow speed or normal speed, 3400. This one here, 3450, you could see. But um, now the surface speed is something different. Now remember, RPMs will stay constant no matter what. So in other words, whether this wheel is one inch or 10 inches, it's going to, every time it turns, that's one revolution, two revolutions, the, it doesn't matter how big it is. So that stays constant. What changes is as this wheel grows and gets bigger, the tool, when it hits the surface of, that's called surface feet per minute, as it hits the outside of the edge, that spins faster. And the bigger it gets, the faster the outside of the edge will address your tool. Now, you remember we were in school, that you know, you take a, a circle that had uh, three things we had to know about a circle the outside of the circle is called the circumference the uh from edge to edge is called the diameter and from the center to the edge is called the radius and how that works let me show you why that's so important for us now why it's so important for us because i have two different circle sizes here and i'm going to show you as far as surface feet per minute i'm going to put this arrow on the edge of the paper here you see it's on the edge of the paper and i'm going to roll that forward just like this until that arrow touches the paper again and you can see it touches over here at that second line we have a second line up there i'm going to do the same thing with the can here we're going to start the arrow there we're going to roll it and then it will wind up here you can see here so you can see that how much difference there is in the length of surface that'll pass over your tool with just the difference in these two diameters of, uh, so of that's circles. why it's so important to know the RPMs of your machine before you hook up a wheel. If you know you hook up too big of a wheel and certain wheels will uh, have an RPM uh, max that you could spin it at so before they start spitting wires or disintegrating on you. But let's go to the lathe and let me show you some old ways of finding out RPMs and some you new know, one ways. One of the early ways that I'm sure everybody's seen one of these before. This is an RB RPM indicator made by Craftsman. Absolutely beautiful little uh, tool here. And there's a little bump here that you line up with that hole. You can see, okay, that's the zero line. And what you do is you hold this. Now, this has a triangle tip, but you can also put on a rubber tip because you're going to press at the end of the shaft. And what you do is we're going to insert this in here. And when we turn it on, you'll see this this uh ball start to turn and as it does that's how you measure your rpm what you do is you take a stopwatch and you count how many times this passes around that bot is 100 rpm and uh, you do it for a minute so we're going to turn it on now and you could see that starting to turn can you see that and uh now you would see that's 50 uh 60 70 you're reading the outside gauge it was spinning the other way you would read the inside that's 100 that's 100 rpm we just did now again you take a stopwatch and over a minute you would see that was 500 rpm over here you'd see me demonstrate this before here's an old stuart werner tachometer again they made these by thousands okay nice tachometer again this one here you again you press to the edge so we're going to open this up a little bit so that we can uh, press this inside here and then i'll show you what it looks like here it should hit 500 rpm so here we go we're going to push this on now take a look at it and there you go 500 rpm obviously this is a lot easier to use than timing it with a, a stopwatch but they made thousands of these types. My buddy Dan Semmel is the one that got me into this. And uh, he has one of the largest collections of all types of RPM indicators 
in the United States. Now, machinists, tool and die makers and everything would use these. And look at the beautiful cases these came in with the, uh, the purple flocking. And you can see here, this one here is a... Uh, um, quite large again made for probably bigger lace but this one goes you could see here 4400 probably goes to almost uh almost 5000 rpm but it starts at 400 so let's take one of the tips here we'll take the same triangle tip that we'll be using before we'll place it on here like this and we'll go over to the lathe and set it for 1600 and see how this okay, we does. set up at 1665 rpm let's see what the gauge says. Okay, you can see 1600 is right over here all right on the right so we're going to press this into the center here hold it firm and it should go straight up and down when we turn it on there you go just over 1600 rpm on this vintage gauge isn't that beautiful now another reason you want to check your rpms because you can't always trust these uh, motors like this one here says 3450 another one that says 3450 i found most of these motors that around three thousand they run about 3600 rpm and to check that we're going to use our meter that we just uh, our the rpm gauge we're going to put it into the center shaft here and turn it on and see what this registers at okay get a good grip on here turn it on now you can see that's 3600 rpm okay now this says 3450 but it's it's off a lot of them are off so you can't go by the labels you have to check it let me show you another way to check it. this little unit's called a trays it okay they're still made today they're made in germany you can see here made in germany and uh what this uses is every uh, motor in engine has a rotating parts which has a little vibration. And this uses a piece of spring steel that is rotated. It comes in and out of the casing. And when you extend it to a certain point, the, vib the harmonics, the vibrations will move this up and down. And you could tell how fast your motor is going. So it's pretty interesting. You just put it on top of your motor. Briggs & Stratton is the company that uh, sells these over here. Let me show you how now, this works. what we're going to do is we're going to feed this in and out until this wire has the longest uh, vibration. Um, and that's how you know where you're at, the hummock. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the motor on and we're going to go in and out until this has the widest range on that. Look at the yellow up here, this part. Okay. Oh, see that? See it's starting to spin up there? See that? Now we'll go a little bit further. Now it's starting to collapse, you see? So we'll go back a little bit. We want to get the accurate reading here. And right about, right about there is the uh, uh, widest, right? So then we'll take it out and we'll read the little gauge here. And you can see here what it says. It's uh, two, four, uh, just over 3,600 RPM. You see that? Isn't that, isn't that just marvelous? This now, if I still have your interest, then outstanding, because this is called a strobo tack. And uh, let me show you how this works. Now, how a strobo tack works is there's a gauge up here. You can see there's a gauge, and this will be illuminated later. And what it does is, you see that uh, there's a tube that gets strobed every time, every sec. So you adjust it here, the rate of strobing, and uh, you could tell when things are rev revolving, when the strobe stops, when the motion stops, you could tell you're synchronized with the RPMs and read it off this gauge. It's just... How beautiful is this? Let me show you how this baby works and we'll hook it up and okay, give it a here's shot. Here's the setup. We killed some of the lights because this one isn't as bright. And you can see here, we're going to turn this on and uh, we'll turn this on over here. You can see the indicator dial lights up for RPMs. It takes about five seconds and then this will start strobing because that's a tube. It has to warm up. It's a, actually a couple tube system. Now you'll see some flashing that's uh, normal that's the camera sync in there but it, it's just flashing and we're going to turn this on and see what happens okay so i'm going to put you on a tripod and we're going to turn it to get to the right rpm okay excuse the flame frame rate of the camera the bar is going up and down but i can't control that but you can see here what i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust this down you see i'm lowering it and you can see that arrow moving slowly but i can assure you it's moving at 1600 and uh, seven, 1650 rpm i believe now i'm going to get this until it stops i'm going to bring it around here okay and i'm just adjusting that dial until it until it stops 
Now that it's stopped, you can see the frame rate. Uh, just let me get it up just a little bit. There we go. That's that's how fast it's going. That's stopped. Now I'm going to show you what it says over here on the gauge. Can you see that gauge here? Let me just. And you can see it's. Uh, uh, I'll read it. Now there are a bunch of things you can use the strobo tack or stroboscope for as far as you could tell how a machine is running. You could check to see belt wobble. Um, you can check to see if uh, if something says something on the shaft writing and things like that. It actually freezes the motion of that uh, whatever rotating part you have and you can have it uh, for all different revolutions. It's really a cool tool. All of them are. Now, strobo scopes or strobo tacks are still made today. Here is a, a later model, but the, the ones today, they're usually handheld and they're a little different. This one here is pretty interesting because this one here, uh, you can see here how this operates. Let me show you. It's been a while since I had this open. Here we go. You can see here, this one has a, uh, a, a better strobe to it. Can you see that there? has a slightly better strobe to it. It's more powerful. And uh, here's the cord, how it hooks up. And let's try this one out and see what kind of equipment we can measure other than okay, the lathe. Okay, here's the setup here. We have this facing our drill press. We're going to take a look at this drill bit. I have no idea what the RPM of this machine is because the uh, variable speed isn't working. And uh, so we're going to see what the uh, RPM okay, is. here we're going to power it up. And again, this takes a couple seconds to strobe, and you can see here, it'll start strobing. And this one has a brighter strobe to it. And you could also hear the clicking, hear that? That's pretty cool. Now, you can see what the drill press, what the drill looks like. Pardon me, moving around. But we're gonna start it up now. Okay, here we're looking at the drill press, and you can see here, if you look, the drill almost looks like it's going in slow motion, but look at the chuck, the top of the chuck there. Look at the holes in the chuck, and you just turn the knob until you get those to come to a stop, and when they come to a stop, you know, which is very close here, you can see, then you would check the dial on your stroboscope to see what the RPMs actually are here. RPMs, let me just touch this here. And that's how you read the RPMs. You spin this like this, the outer dial, to go faster or slower. Pretty interesting, huh? Now you can see here it is spinning at 3600 RPM, but it looks uh, much slower. And here it's coming close to a stop here. And uh, now as you adjust it, you can trigger it back and forth just to have it creep one way or the other. Now we're going to check the calibration or the RPM of my grinder, my Craftsman grinder. But you can also use this to read things that are on the shaft if you don't want to stop a machine. If you want it to read what specifications, you can see I could turn it. and Now that looks like it's, uh, it's dead stopped, right? But meanwhile, I'm just rotating the... Uh, here we go. You can see it says wear eye protection. Isn't that cool that you could read that while it's spinning? And it is indeed spinning. You can see if I just turn it a little bit left or right, you can get that to you know spin off. But that it looks totally stopped, right? Isn't that amazing? So according to my uh, stroboscope and strobe attack, you could see that uh, this motor registers at about a little, little over 3,600 RPM. So you can't trust the labels of any motor that you have. You have to go by uh, by what the RPM indicator says. Now they do make modern tachometers and strobe tacks today, but unfortunately for me, the enjoyment of using these modern technology just doesn't compare with using the vintage stuff. Okay, before I forget, special announcement. This Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, I believe it's the 27th, if I'm not mistaken, so we're going to have our... Uh, meeting over at the Frank Brush Barn in Long Island. If you're in Long Island in the area, we are there between 6 and 8 p.m. in uh, beautiful Smithtown, Long Island. And uh, all the tool meter, the tool nuts will be there. So uh, if you're in the area, it's this Wednesday. You got to be be vaccinated if, you know, <laughs> whatever the case may be. And uh, if you're in the area, stop by. So in closing, I uh, hope you found this pretty interesting because I could play with these machines all day long. It's so cool. And I'm sorry about the frame rate of the camera. It makes it hard to see, but it's really cool in person if you could see it. So I uh, hope you have a great day. Take care now. Enjoy the beginning of the week. Bye-bye.